What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Glad you came out again for another fun show. We're going to be talking about best ham radios to buy when starting out, or at least look at, maybe put on your wish list, maybe put on, you know, your your hopeful dreams of ham radio, right? What would you what would you want to get? What would you get on the list? What you're thinking about buying? That kind of thing. Thanks again for coming out. Anybody watch any uh, interesting TV this week? I'll be interested to hear your thoughts in the chat. Let me know. And enjoy the memes while we uh, while we roll in here. Again, thanks for coming out. What is up, everybody? I want to give you something fun to start everything off with. New meme, new hot meme. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for joining me on the Am Radio Crash Course. I am Josh KI6NAZ. Uh, we try to have a little bit of fun at the weekend here for our live show on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Again, we're talking about fun ham radio stuff, but we have a lot of other little interesting things that happens along the way. So thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. My wife's in the chat says, I saw this crazy guy on his conspiracy theory show talking about radio signals and cosmonauts. Where is that picture? There it is. There it is. Cosmonauts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and flip it right over to the widescreen. Uh, Leia bought me a little <laughs> celebratory champagne. I don't have a, a flute because, you know, we've got the Ham Radio Crash Course uh, glasses here. So if you're interested in a glass, check out hamtactical.com. The link is uh, in the description. We'll go ahead and open this bad boy. Thank you, Leia. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> a little bit of a heathen, I guess, pouring it into a pint glass. I'm not going to fill it up all the way, but Leia, if you'd like a glass, come, uh, come, come, bring one in here. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you some bubblesy bubbly. All right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining us out here. Like I said, the title of today's show is going to be, you know, best ham radios to buy if you're starting out or you're interested in ham radio. Uh, and primarily, we're going to be talking about these are these are ham radios, right? We're not going to dip too much into shortwave and that other fun stuff. But yeah, I thought. Uh, thought this would be a fun episode. There's lots of questions that people have brought up, lots of the things that I, I get all the time. So this would be a good one to cover. We've talked about something like this in the past, mainly um, from like high price points and, and, and how price points work in ham radio. This is going to be more focused towards people starting out, um, kind of my thoughts. I'll walk through some of the radios, why I think they're good choices for not just their price point, and these will these will tend towards the, the lower side of price, but um, also ease of use, certain features that I think are important for people starting out, all that good stuff. So again, thanks for thanks for checking it out here. So yeah, I was on a TV show called Phantom Signals. It's on Science Channel. Uh, the link is in the description if you want to watch it. I understand it's region locked though, so if you are outside the United States, you likely might not be able to see it. So uh, I don't have a NordVPN uh, <laughs> sponsorship, otherwise I'd tell you, go use NordVPN or something. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> make sure to check that out. Um, okay, hamtactical.com, our merch store that actually my wife runs for the channel, and she comes up with a lot of the ideas. QRP Heroes is a good one, one of the favorites. Why is it not? F Come on now. There we go. Low power, maximum effort for QRP Heroes. That sounds about right. And still my favorite, <laughs> still number one, man, uh, this l appliance operator's local FN51. Whew. Still my favorite shirt. Uh, and that comes in hoodies now and tumblers and coffee mugs and the whole nine yards. So fantastic work, Leia, on, on all of that. And thank you. And thanks for checking it out. And that's where you can get the, the glasses if you're interested in that. Mm. Okay, so I got some big news. Uh, last week, we had Steve, K5ATA on, to talk about getting youth into ham radio. And you guys were so generous uh, with your super chats and, and all that other awesome stuff. There was some donations that came in after. I took all that money 
and I pulled it into one. We got uh, the Padawans, Steve's class. We got him a Hako FX888D soldering station. Got that off of Amazon. Shipped it right to him. By the way, go check out Good Game Ham Radio here on YouTube and subscribe to him. And you can follow along as, as this whole thing progresses. But in addition to that, we wanted to get a kit. And after the uh, the show, we spent a lot of time on the after chat. By the way, we got an after chat after the live stream. If you want to watch along with the the after chat, which I Twitch or I stream to Twitch, and also cover in uh, in Discord on our text and voice chat. You can, uh, you can watch some of the little hijinks we get into. Usually we play a little radio, and we answer some questions, stuff like that. But on the after chat, that's where we talked about what kit we should get for the kids. Initially, we're all, we were kind of all going down the road of a pixie kit because we could buy a lot of them. The problem with the pixie kit is that they're not a lot of fun to use, particularly for somebody starting out. So I, after talking to some people, uh, we decided to go with the Cricket 40 from four state QRP group. Now what makes the Cricut uh, a really good kit is that those spirals you see in the middle, those are the toroids. They're cut onto the board. You don't have to wind any toroids. So for the kids, it's mainly a through hole soldering project. It's very easy to set up. I have one of these radios in 30 meters. We had some fun building that live many, many months ago now. But so I'm letting you all know because what likely I'm going to do at the very least me, um, I will build the 40 meter cricket and we'll do a little bit of operating with it. And I what I would love to do is if if you are all interested in doing a kit project, go buy this kit, the 40 meter cricket. And what we'll do is we'll build it live and then we'll try and make contacts in the after chat for whatever day we build live and if enough people tell me they're interested I will um, I will go ahead and pull you into a zoom we'll do a whole thing I'm, I'm, I'm assuming some of the creator um, some of our youtubers bunch will come on and we'll do a live thing I hope you know I hope Steve will k5ata and that would be really cool so if you're interested in that now is the time go buy a um, a cricket in 40 meters Somebody mentioned Beer Fridge Fund, so that's also what I got uh, for our, our anniversary. By the way, I'm working on my shack. I was a little bummed out that I couldn't participate in the YouTubers bunch. Right here is a, is a new fridge that Leia got me. So I'm, I'm in the process of doing something pretty big in the shack, at least that's what I'm telling myself. I'll probably get to it next month. Um, but I'm in a state of disarray right now, and... Yeah, it should be pretty interesting. I'm pretty excited for that. So anyway, Four States QRP. I don't think I put the link in the description, but if you look for Four States QRP Cricket in 40 meters, that's what you want. Okay? So very good. All right, what else we got? Uh, that is what we're going to turn to when we get going with the slides. So okay, let me check the chat room here, make sure I'm not missing anything. I see Mike's in the chat. What's up, Mike? k 8 mrd 86 dm Dennis is there see some other people obviously my wife is talking appreciate you being in the chat as well of course <laughs> somebody's outing me on what I spent on radios apparently to my wife that's not that's not part of the code that's not part of the ham radio code I just want you all to know that <laughs> so what we're doing just to remind people I started off a little different than I normally do so I want to go back a step the ham radio crash course is all about creating a space where not just me, although I'm, I'm obviously making the video right now. Try to create a community of people that, you know, have no problem working together, answering questions with people in a way that people don't feel like they're asking a dumb question. That's really what it comes down to. So we kind of say we're moving forward together with Ham Radio, and that's what this is all about. So I'll, I'll try and stop for questions as we go, but I've, I've got a... Uh, I've got uh, Roberto Ellison says, I thought my shack was a mess. Like I said, I'm, I'm working on a bunch of projects right now. So I do have a lot of stuff going on. But yes, it's normally not that bad. Anyway. So yeah, anyway, ask your questions or join us on the Discord and the Facebook. The link is in the description. And that's probably the best way to get answers for whatever you're looking for in Ham Radio. So thanks again for coming on out. All right, let me pull up my slides here. All right, radios to think about when starting out in ham radio by me. Because you're likely going to want more than one radio. It's generally true no matter what happens. 
you're going to want more than one radio. Radios do different things. They fit into different niches. There's all kinds of different aspects of ham radio that, you know, you're as you get into it, you'll realize that there's parts of it that you're more into than other things, and, and maybe your tastes change a little bit. And guess what? Not all radios work the same. They don't do all the same things. So that's kind of what this is about. All right, so the ground rules of tonight, I'm going to attempt to make recommendations on the radios I like from having owned or used them well enough for me to have an opinion. I'll try to provide thoughts on radios in the current retail environment, meaning what you can go buy off the shelf either online you know, or in an HRO or something like that, and use radios where I have thoughts on those used radios. I am sure I'm going to miss some great radios. My not speaking about them does not mean they are bad. It means I don't have enough experience with them. So post your favorites in the chat. We can talk about them. We can even pull them up and look at some of the features, okay? All right, so we'll start at VHF, UHFs, and that's generally the first stop for most people. Here's a pile of HTs. These are actually some of my favorite HTs all piled up there. Relatively inexpensive, although the price swings are, are huge just in that pile you see right there. And lots of interesting options and niches. Just right out of the gate with your technician license, you know, your, your freshly minted call sign, you're just starting out on ham radio, what can you do? Well, obviously, you can just talk handy talkie to handy talkie. We call that simplex. Uh, you can work repeaters. And what are repeaters? I've done a lot of videos on the topic, but just to repeat that a little bit, it's like a radio that's on a hill or somewhere up high. The antenna's up high at their very least. And it allows everyone to talk into it, and it transmits on a slightly different frequency, and everybody can hear the other, the, the transmitting party through the repeater. So it's kind of like amplifying and gets a little bit higher up in the air, so your propagation space on VHF is a bit wider. Repeaters are great for that. Mobile radios, right? Again, going back to Simplex a little bit, everybody loves a handy talkie, right? A handheld radio. Mobile radios are fantastic because they give you 50 watts of output instead of just 5 watts which allows you to do simplex calls a little bit better. Satellites. Hey, satellites. I'm not an expert on satellites. We are going to do a very fun show next weekend on satellite operation. I am going to be having an expert on. So I'll save the surprise a little bit until we get closer, but we're going to talk about portable satellite stations. Maybe we'll dip into some more serious stations as well because satellites, you know, you can start out pretty inexpensively and then it can get really expensive in, when you get into rotors that, you know, work the X and Y and Z and all that fun stuff. Uh, those can get really expensive and the radios get expensive to match too, but you don't have to do that to get started with satellites. And again, satellites, you can work with a handy talkie a lot of the time. So you can make contacts states away via a handy talkie through a satellite, which is kind of like a repeater in low Earth orbit. We'll talk about some uh, digital voice because you can do that with your technician license as well. So DMR, Yaesu System Fusion, D-Star, that whole thing. You've probably heard of that before. Packet APRS, you can do that with your technician license. Weak signal is basically where you use a mode like single sideband. So something like what you would do in HF radio, bring that to the VHF, UHF space, you can do that. You generally need special radios to do that. And microwave. Right on. All right, so we'll start with the Baofeng. You have to start with the Baofeng. Here's what I'll say about the Baofeng. Generally, new hams, you're probably going to end up with a Baofeng or a Baofeng derivative. Is it a good place to start? Sure, right? Otherwise, your entry level would be, you know, $100 and up. A Baofeng is $25, right? Makes sense. They're all pretty similar, though, and that's the really big takeaway, aside from that big blue box, takeaway box. All the Baofengs are pretty similar. I get asked... I don't even know, once a day, what are my thoughts of this Baofeng versus this Baofeng? And I generally reply, they're pretty much the same. You know, even if they have, you know, this one is a little bit more water resistant than this one, they're, they're kind of generally the same as far as their operation, the features they have, all that stuff. Where you get major differences is if, you, you know, again, the water resistant, resistant ones, the ones that are tri-banded, that is a, you know, it's got a whole extra band, but guess what? It still functions the same. The menu options are still the same. If it's DMR, that's also going to be a bit different. Speaking of DMR, the DMR Baofengs are not great. They can be 
problematic. Uh, many have failed. They have a pretty high failure rate, in which point you either have to send them back or, you know, do other wild stuff uh, to, to get them going. B. Butler, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. What's going on there? Okay, good. Uh, yeah, thank you. No question, but but thank you for the super chat. And dubious quality and emissions. Generally, that's the, the what you're... The, the price that you're paying is reducing quality in the components that are used, the material of the case that's used, and also a lot of them failed to meet the emission standards for the FCC. I've done a whole video on that. Actually, I've done two videos on that on spurious emissions. So if you're curious, just search Baofeng spurious emissions and you'll find it. Baofeng's value begins and ends with their price. The reason why they're a high value is because of their price. They do function as a ham radio for doing VHF work like talking on a repeater. Simplex is fine if you're in close, and that's kind of what they're for. KD9PBQ says, Baofengs are great scanners. Kind of. Um, the problem with the Baofeng as a scanner is the scanning of a Baofeng is slow. When you put it into scan mode, it's kind of slow. Also, it does not do any digital modes. It's purely an analog radio, traditional FM analog radio. Baofengs I have. Those are three Baofengs right there. Your traditional UV5R on the left, a T1, which I've reviewed, and a UV3R, which I've reviewed. And the UV3R is actually kind of a clone of a Yesu radio that, that we'll talk about a little bit later. Baofeng replacements. So if you're thinking about, again, you know, maybe you, you, you just started out, you got a Baofeng, or maybe somebody gave you a Baofeng. That happens a lot, particularly if you're active in a club. Somebody will like, here you go. Here's a Baofeng, kid. Enjoy your day. What would you replace it with? Well, the Yesu FT4X, I reviewed that as well this year, and there are a series of derivatives of similar Yesu radios that are kind of all in the Baofeng space, entry-level radio. Uh, they all generally function similar, similarly, close enough. And another big shout out, the, the Wushin KG UV 8D and 9D. Those are full duplex radios, got a really cool screen, really high quality, bit more expensive, but uh, that is a really good radio. That, and the full duplex, at least I believe the UV 9D is full duplex. That will be important for satellites. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Stan, KO4GDC says, Baofeng scanning is painfully slow. I didn't know how slow until I got a Yesu mobile. Yeah, and we can, we can demonstrate that, or maybe we'll save it for the after chat. You know, bring your questions to the after chat. So better radios. And when I say better radios, I'm talking about the upwards of $100. Why would someone that, that is starting out want a better radio? Likely, same kind of thing I just said, you started out with a Baofeng, you you cut your teeth you're used to programming it you know how to get on repeaters but you're like hey I'm, i've got a i've talked on the repeaters now what you know now what do i do other than that well that that may be when you'd want to look outside of that to other radios the radio i have pictured there is a very expensive radio but you get the idea you get better user interfaces generally with better radios better quality both in the components the material the case is made of many many more features better warranties and you won't draw as much hate. That's kind of an ambiguous one. Some people get really, and again, we're talking about your local area. Some local repeaters, if they even hear, you know, if you say, I'm using a Baofeng, they get really mad about it. So, you know, I don't know. I Some people are resistant to that. You know, they don't want to get caught up in that kind of stuff. And I understand. Oh, my gosh, what did I just do? I just made the earth fly. There we go. Okay. I had to move things around a little bit. Sorry about that. And uh, super chat, YOLO swag for Jesus 420. Notice me, senpai. Notice me. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Good timing on the, uh, the animation there, too. Analog radios. All right, so this is generally, you know, most of the newer radios that are coming out, particularly as you start getting spending more, upwards of like $150 to $200, they generally all have like a digital mode tied into them. But there's still a lot of really, really good um, analog-only radios. You know, good places to start. These are going to be like your traditional bread and butter, good place to learn, rock-solid radios. Still a fantastic rock-solid radio is a Yesu FT60. 
wow my first ham radio it's still out there it's getting a little old i appreciate that but it's still a really good radio in fact one of the best front ends for a fm receiver for working repeaters working simplex you know working whatever really really good it doesn't get overloaded very easily it's it's a fantastic radio and I'll, I'll throw in a second recommendation. I get to play with these rec- one of these recently at an HRO. The Alinco DV, uh, DJ VX50T. It is IP67 rated, so it's dust resistant and water resistant up to one meter for 30 minutes. And I believe it's just under $100. They go on sale every once in a while. So check that out if you're interested in something that would be fine to take outdoors and, and maybe get a little wet. Thomas Grenz Jr. says, thanks, past, past tech, 10 p.m. last night, picked up FT3DR for my first um, hiker and into space. Want that APRS and GPS. We'll be talking about that. Yes, indeed. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Juan Carlos Bidalt, I think it is. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing them correctly. Juan Carlos and I have been exchanging some messages. He's got uh, a YouTube channel. I hope that's his actual, uh, His if you click on it, that's his YouTube, hopefully. So I'll take you over there. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Cheers to you. Cheers to everybody for coming out. I appreciate you watching. All right, so digital radios. Uh, I'm going to talk high level, and then we'll dive in a little bit. I've got five of them here. The Anytone 878 for DMR. YSF, that's Yesu System Fusion, and Wires X, you got the FT70 and the FT3DR. The D Star is generally going to be the ID52. Why do I say the ID52? So the ID51 just recently got discontinued, and the ID31, I believe, is on the way out or may already be discontinued. So we'll talk a little bit about D Star, but there is a brand new D Star radio coming out. I will be taking a look at it when it comes out. It looks similar in in user interface, user controls to the 51, but once I get my hands on it, we'll know for sure. Nick Makedo, new to the hobby community with a Baofeng, and the hate towards them is really off-putting. Yeah, man, so it, I'll, I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> Let me go back a couple of slides here. Won't draw the hate. You know what I always tell people when, when they're on a repeater and they ask what radio they're using? Just say Yesu FT60. <laughs> that just... Yesu FT60. That's what you do. That's what you say. That's it. No big deal. You don't have to go any deeper than that. Because there's no like forensics on the audio. They're going to be like, hmm, that's a definite Baofeng tone. I can I can know that tone anywhere. They won't do that to you. So don't worry about it. Paul Garber with a super chat passed my tech with your help. Hey, thank you. I'm, I'm glad it helped. That means a lot to me. It's working. The, the, the information I'm putting out there is working. I'm glad to hear it. And uh, la- yesterday, no, I take it back. This morning, Leia and I released a podcast, Ham Radio Handheld Cold War. Kind of a catchy title. You might want to hear it. It talks a little bit about digital handhelds and the interesting world of handhelds today, particularly since the uh, introduction of the Baofeng and what it did to the market. So my DMR of choice, the Anytone 878. I've also reviewed that, so you can definitely check that out on my videos. The pros are it has a great battery, really, really good battery. It will uh, last, you know, you can take it off the charger when it's charged, let it sit for weeks, and it's it's good to go. It's loud. Probably the loudest HT I own. I can't think of anything that's louder. Front panel programmable in a DMR radio. Kind of rare, and that's going into the DMR a little bit. Which not We're not getting into too much detail, but I have uh, DMR programming videos that you can go check out. A lot of people do. There's a lot of videos on the topic. And that's good. Front panel programmable in DMR is kind of rare in the space, and the 878 has it. Now, I appreciate the what I just showed you. The Anytone 878 is not cheap. There are cheaper DMR radios on the market. I am not a big fan of any of them. So if you want to go less expensive, that's fine. This is one of the rare options where I don't really have a cheaper thing to recommend for you. So digital radios kind of like that in a lot of ways. Digital handheld radios. Cons, it's it's still DMR. E.g., the programming them can be difficult. There is a learning curve to newcomers. So if you're starting out and maybe you bought a Baofeng and you want to take a big jump forward, DMR can be difficult for a first radio, let alone even a second radio. 
But, you know, if, if you don't mind a little bit of a uh, learning curve ahead of you and you, you don't mind the, the challenge there, it's a great radio. All right, so YSF Wires X is also kind of an expensive one. I apologize, but there's two here. The FT3DR is my daily driver for radio. I appreciate it's not an entry-level radio, but if you're talking Wires X, Yaesu System Fusion, it is very, very easy to use. You get digital, wideband receive, GPS, APRS, all those things in the FT3. However, if you just want to get on Yesu System Fusion or Wires X, the FT70, which is also a Yesu radio, is a fantastic place to go. Now, I will mention this once we get to the end of these slides, uh, the, the digital slides. And used, you could look for an FT2DR, which is the predecessor to the FT3DR. That is going to be... Not that much cheaper, but those prices will start coming down very quickly. And so D-Star, I mentioned the, the kind of weirdness with the uh, ID31s and ID51s are really not available in the market or in the retail space, but that means you can buy them used. You can still find them. They're still available. There's even some retail establishments that are like liquidating them, so you, you may be able to find them at a steal. I believe I got my, yeah, I got my ID31 for... 150 bucks? I think that's what I got. And that's really good for a, for a D-Star radio. And yeah, we're expecting the ID52 to come out. I, you know what? I don't know when we're expecting for it to come out. Mr. Roman says, I feel like a fool now. I bought four Baofeng UV5Rs plus and added real Nagoya NA771 antennas for SHTF. Now I hear they are no... No, 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 you know, Mr. Roman, you're, you're, you're taking that the wrong way. The Baofengs are fine. They, they operate as radials. You'll be able to talk to each other with the, the five Baofengs you bought. You know, if, you, if you're all hams, hopefully you're all hams, and you're handing them out and you're talking, they'll be fine. It's that they don't have the features that these other radios have. That, that's just the reality of it. It is a very entry-level radio. You just have to keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with them, and particularly if you're planning, if these are purely for preparedness, it's not that big a deal. You didn't do a bad thing. Don't worry about it. Crispy Critters, Yesu bias much? Nope, <laughs> not at all. Uh, Christiana uh, sends a super chat. Thank you. I have an Anytone 878, FT3DR, FT65, an IC, T90A, and a UV5 uh, X3. Well, very good. Yeah, no, I don't have any bias. I just, I just like the FT3DR. That's the one I carry. All right, so uh, let's see. Oh, no, you know what? I forgot to mention one thing. All right, so D-Star options in the, for the non... So, again, ID5131, you can buy them used. If you can still find them, 52 is coming out. So if you still want to do D-Star, like, right now, and, and you're kind of in this weird situation, there's a ton of radios that actually support D-Star, but they're, like, way on the more expensive side because they're going to do a lot more. The Kenwood D74 does D-Star. That is a really good handheld also probably the most expensive handheld so maybe if you're starting out you're not going to just jump right into that the icom ic7100 is a mobile all band all mode hf radio it also includes vhf uhf and does d star you can technically do d star with that the ic9700 will do d star but that's also a base station vhf uhf radio and then, of course, the IC705 that just came out, which is, again, an, an HF plus VHF plus UHF radio. That is a lot of radio. It's very expensive. Not really a place for an, a, a newcomer, but I'm putting in here for completeness that they all do D-Star. All right, so maybe you you got started. You got your Baofeng. Maybe you went outside one night, and you, you, you tilted the radio over, and you know you had the antenna perpendicular to a satellite that was coming overhead. And you got to hear, you know, the satellite trying to make a contact. Maybe it did make a contact. It's awesome. But you're like, hey, what's the next step if you want to do satellite, if you want to operate satellites? The Kenwood D72 is full duplex, meaning you can have headphones in your ears. You can listen to the downlink, which will be like on 70 centimeters, and you uplink on two meters. So you hear the downlink of the satellite in your ears while you transmit at the same time. That is very important for doing satellite operations. Or you can just simply use two handhelds. You can buy two Baofengs. You can get yourself a Baofeng for listening and a Baofeng for transmitting. One would be on 70 centimeters, the other would be on two meters or vice versa. And that's how you listen. 
Now, ideally, you'd, you'd be good if you had like a Yagi to go along with it. A Yagi is a direction antenna, a beam. Arrow antenna makes those. Elk antenna makes some hand wavable um, Yagi antennas. One's a log periodic and the other's a Yagi. But you would just connect the two radios directly into that antenna, and then that's how you run it. And then, of course, I already mentioned the Wushan KGUV9D. And if you're really, really serious about satellites, the ICOM 9700, which we already mentioned, and the Kenwood 2000 will do what you need to do for satellites as well, but that usually requires a really expensive antenna setup. We'll likely be talking about that a bit next week. So if you're interested, come watch again next week. Red Pill says, best for SHTF or EMP pulse. Wow, I made a whole video on that. It's called the EMP trash can or what's in my tactical trash can. And I cover all the radios that I packed in it that I would depend on if it was an SHTF situation. You should check that out. One of my pretty popular videos in the last couple of months. All right, so we talked about handy talkies. What if you wanted to step things up a bit and put a radio in your car? what we call a mobile radio, or maybe you just want that at home. You put an antenna outside on the roof. I've done a whole series of videos on mobile radios, specifically, you know, what antennas to run, how to set them up, you know, which ones to pick from. But here is a couple of, of inexpensive starter mobile radios that I would recommend you take a look at. The ICOM 2730, I own one, works great. The Kenwood tmv 7 one a, which is on the far right side of the screen. Those you can sometimes get used. Those are fantastic radios. Those are very well loved. People actually use those for satellites too. And uh, used, or oh, sorry, the TYT 9700, which is a clone of the Yesu 8900. I have that in my truck, still working. I think I've had it in there for over five years now. No. Man, that thing's older than Ben, I think. Wow getting old <laughs> i've had that for a very long time and it's still kicking just fine so good radio and then used if you can find one because they're sometimes hard to find and they're pretty expensive people like them a lot the yesu ftm 100 mm. gabriel s says what about the yesu 8 um 8900 well so what i was trying to do there is all everything on the top is going to be still available in the retail space yeah if you can find a yesu 8900 go for it uh, they're kind of more expensive, though. So my mobile choice, this is just me in my car. I'm not necessarily saying go do this because this is an expensive radio, too. But again, these guys are all inexpensive. So, you know, write these down. Take a look. And I'm going to show you a, a handy list at the end of this show in, in, in a little while here that you can easily go to and find a lot of these radios very easily. My car, this is actually a picture of my car. That radio on the bottom there, that is an FTM 400. The reason I have that, so if you compare and contrast it to the, the radios I just talked about on the last slide, this that radio has GPS, APRS. It does Yesu System Fusion, Wires X. It's easy to use. It's a touchscreen. And I and I like, it's not just easy to use because it's a touchscreen. It's easy to use because I, I like the menus. Some people don't, but that's me. Again, these are my recommendations. You don't have to agree, but... Yeah, I think they make sense. I try to be objective here. Eric Bowling says, hey, man, appreciate all the info you give. Can't turn on notifications for your channel. Turned off content made for kids. My content's not made for kids. Hmm. Well, thank you. I will go look. What's up with that? Anyway, thank you for the super chat. I, I, I appreciate it, but I'll go look into that. Oh, oh, is it because of last week? with Steve and the youth? Oh man. Packet radio. You know, I, I, I've done a couple of videos now on packet radio. I've been loving packet radio. I happen to live in an area where packet radio is so much fun. Packet radio is basically the predecessor of APRS. It's where you use a radio just like the one you see there or there, there, like that, there. And a small device called a TNC. That's the traditional way. People use Raspberry Pis now to mimic that. And the computer, the TNC, connects to your radio. 
and they exchange the audio signals back and forth and the radio either transmits or receives them. And it allows you to communicate via text or, or via your computer. So you've got a bulletin board system um, in your little packet radio setup that allows you to receive messages, send messages. Fantastic. Like I said, I, I, did a, I did a live stream on packet radio and I've done multiple other videos talking about packet radio. Very inexpensive radio that you could use for both packet and just for simplex as a mobile radio. Doesn't have a detachable screen, but still good, is the Alinko DR135 Mark III. I believe it's about $135. Now, the the Alinko is, is mono band. It only does two meters. But if you're doing packet, you're mainly going to do two meters anyway. So that's not that big a deal. You can throw a Raspberry Pi on that thing and instead of a TNC. Raspberry Pis are like 40 bucks. Less than that if you get an older one. Uh, but I like the Cantronics TNCs. They're not inexpensive though, so keep that in mind. Used? Oh man, there's tons of packet radio stuff everywhere uh, for ham radio. So check that out. Packet's great. And there's a ton of videos online of packet radio. It's very old school. Very hipster. I'm, I'm a little bit of a hipster myself, so uh, I love I love uh, packet radio for that reason. All right, so how about a base station VHF, UHF radio? Now, we're talking you're getting started, but you're already, like, getting real serious about the game. And I'm doing this for completeness. Okay, these are not cheap radios, right? Uh, I, I cover these later in the video with a bit of prices. I actually believe I left some off. I apologize for that. But if you search any of these, you'll find the prices. Everything I just showed was, aside from the ones that I use, the ones that are my recommendations are all sub $300, particularly for the mobiles, and, and sub $100, sub $150 for the HTs. Okay, so general all-mode VHF, UHF stations, which are called, you know, if you're going to work weak signal, we mentioned single sideband. Single sideband is a voice uh, com op mode of operation for, again, just point-to-point -point communications. It's not FM. It's single sideband. It does a little bit better. It's a little bit more efficient with sending out that voice information over RF. There are only a few radios in the retail space that do... VHF, UHF, base station type work right now. Most of them are all band radios, meaning they also do HF. The only one that's really focused on VHF, UHF, and actually 1.2 gigahertz is the ICOM 9700. That is a $1,400 radio, though, so probably not entry level. But interestingly enough, the ICOM 7100, all band, that is about $700. And that's a pretty good radio, and that'll also do weak signal work, single sideband again, and I already mentioned earlier that'll do D-Star as well. So maybe a Christmas gift, maybe a couple Christmas gifts, maybe put your uh, put your Chinese New Year money together, save your money up a bit, and you can get a 7100. And then I put this here for completeness. The Yaesu 991 is HF all band and does VHF, UHF as well, as well and does Yaesu system fusion. So... Expensive, though, $1,200. Keep that in mind. Used, though. So the ICOM IC7000 is all banned. The IC746 Mark IIG is all banned. And I don't know why I put Yesu there. There is a Yesu that I dropped off. I apologize. Hmm. Anyway, that is what I would recommend. Sorry about that. I'll have to think about it. Or somebody drop in chat. What is a used Yesu VHF UHF radio that will do weak signal? I'll challenge the chat room. Challenging the chat room right now. Anybody have an answer? I'm watching the chat room. All right, I'll come back to you, chat room. You failed me. It's taking too long. It's actually hard. There's there's a, not a ton of uh, base stations, particularly base stations that specialize in FT FT eight forty seven. Uh, the FT eight fifty seven D will do it as well. Those are both used. That's true. We do mention the nine fifty seven later. All right, very good. All right, so let's talk about HF. You're interested. You're hooked. You're down with ham radio. You're starting out, but you want to do it on the maybe the cheaper side to get started. I'm showing off a little bit here, a little flex, sorry. 
uh, it was just a good picture and I, I grabbed it. So do you want to make some long contacts into other countries? You know, then HF radio is likely where you want to be to get good access to HF. You're likely going to want to get your general license. That's pretty much going to open the doors for HF. Before that, with your technician, you really only get 10 meters. And then every other low band in HF, you really only get, and I say every other, it's only four off the top of my head, that you only get Morse code, CW space on. So really, get your general. I, I think everybody should get their general. Anyway, if you're studying for your technician, please, please consider studying for your general. Because they're going to ask you when you pass your general, and you will, you will, and when you pass your general, pass your technician, they'll ask you if you want to take the general. Please do it. Maybe maybe crack a book. Maybe do the hamstudy.org practice test for general and think about try taking the test. There are lots of great portable opportunities with HF radios. Even the 7300 is, is decently portable. You can carry it in a waterproof box. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. There are fun events like parks on the air, summits on the air. There's contests. There's a contest today. I'm not sure states what state's CUSO party it was. Was it Al wasn't Alabama? It was Missouri. It might have been Missouri today. Anyway, D expeditions. People go on these very elaborate expeditions to remote locations, and we all try to work them when they get there. It's all on HF. We're trying to make these really long distance contacts. Contacts, and lots of hobbyist kits that are available for both radios and for antennas. HF is kind of really where it's at in a lot of things that you can do within ham radio, and it's it's primarily my favorite ham radio to play all right but before we go any further i gotta make a comment on you know it's been said by people smarter than me and i even did a typo so you know they are smarter because i my grammar's horrible start with a 100 watt base station you'll have an easier time making contacts and have a lot of fun because qrp radios are five to ten dollars or <laughs> five to ten watts and you're, um, they're difficult to make contacts with 5 to 10 watts. 100 watts, a lot easier. That's multiple levels of S units above the 5 to 10 watt output. You're putting out more power. It's going to go further. You're going to make more contacts. Just the statistics, the laws, the odds of the whole thing. A lot easier to use. James Mat Mataris, Mataris, maybe? 7300 worth it if I'm only ever going to use it portable, either that or the 891. Good question. We're going to talk about that. Hang on. I appreciate the super chat. And if I don't answer your question, send me a message somewhere. Or join the, uh, if I'm not answered exactly how you want in the slides, because I do talk about that, uh, join the after chat and ping me. Send me a DM. The good news is there are many options in the retail space at entry level prices. The bad news, entry level for HF radios is more than VHF, UHF by a decent chunk. And so this is where we start talking. <laughs> Levi got me. <laughs> and it was uh, <laughs> 5 to $10. That's it, man. That's all it is to get started. It can get expensive. All right. So my, my pick, I'll just throw it out there. 100-watt base station. Again, we're talking base station first. We'll talk about QRP, but it's towards the end. Is going to be the 7300. The radio has all the features you need to get started, and you can often purchase them for about $1,000 new and $800 used. It actually goes down sub $1,000, but you, you got to really be mindful of that. It is a buy once, cry once type radio. It's the radio that will continue to be a value to you as you become more experienced and will likely be your go-to radio for years to come. This is one of the instances where I'll say, you know, you can get a much cheaper HT. You can get a much cheaper mobile radio. You can go a lot cheaper with a lot of the radios you're thinking about purchasing. By all means, go nuts. But when you're thinking about HF, like you're thinking about really doing HF and, and really being successful with HF, I really, really recommend a 7300. It is easy to use. It's easy to learn. It's very simple to interface with your computer because all the kids are doing digital these days. They're getting all cranked up on that digital. Uh, it's 7300's really, really good for that. It's, it's really easy. But there are cheaper options, and we're going to talk about them. Again, this is just my opinion. See that, Leia? Buy ones, cry runs. That's right, Jeeper Creeper. You nailed it. All right, so there are 100-watt base station alternatives. The Yaesu 991 
mentioned that earlier. I'm adding it for completeness. It's all banned. So the 7300 is only HF bands. Six meters through, what is it, 160? 160. Doesn't do two meters and 70 centimeters. So it's not a shack in the box, as they call it. Eight, nine, the 991 is, but it's more expensive, $1,200. Screen is not as good as the 7300 either. All right, so here we go. The 891. It's 100 watts portable radio. Very portable. It's $640. Very, very inexpensive radio for what you're getting for the value, I think, the price. I would consider this a good starting point if the menu system was better and if it was easier to interface with the computer. If you just want to do portable work or you just want to run this as a mobile in your car and you're primarily going to be using it for voice, uh, Morse code CW, this is a fantastic value radio. Really, really inexpensive considering, right? Considering all the options. Really, really good radio. Absolutely big fan. I own one. It's in my car. I use it every day when I'm going to and from work. Now, the downsides of this radio, it has a very complex menu system. The You're looking at the front end of the radio, right? There's two dials with the outer collar uh, ring and the VFO button, and then lots of buttons on the top. Every button has a click and then a click and hold, and it does two different things. But if you want to fine tune parts of the radio, you got to long press that F button, and it brings up a list that you have to scroll through with the dial. And there's like 300 options in that list. You don't have to go in there often. You don't have to really muck around with it until you want to start flipping things over and doing digital and then flipping back to single sideband and doing some other stuff. You can set it up. It's, it's kind of a set it up once and figure it out and you're good to go. So that's not, I, I, don't, I don't nail it too hard for the menu, but the menu is something that I really recommend you try it if you can before you buy it. Everything else about the radio is phenomenal. If you don't think the menu is going to bother you, it's a phenomenal radio and it's priced very well for what you get. It is a fantastic digital signal processing. The DSP functionality in the radio is really, really nice. If you are in an area where you're getting some RFI, but you got a signal that's pretty legible, you just want to clean it up a bit, the DSP button, you just click DSP and, and, and adjust how much DSP you want to add to the signal. It really, really brings out the the tone, the human tone a little bit and clears it up a little bit. It, it robots it a bit, but it makes it a lot more understandable. DSP is very good um, on, on the 891. And then, of course, there's the 7100. We kind of already mentioned it earlier. It does a whole lot of things. It is, it is a mobile radio. It's got that cool little alarm clock look to it. It does all the HF bands, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, and it does D-Star as well. So kind of what you're looking at here, two out of these three radios does... Uh, VHF, UHF, and has a digital mode attached to it. The 991 does EASU System Fusion Wires X, and the 7100 does D-Star. So if you live in an area that has D-Star or EASU System Fusion or DMR, that might change kind of what radios you're going to think about buying. If it's one of these all-band, all-mode radios, well, you, you can pretty much do everything out of the box. Point of note on the 7100, I didn't put it in here, and I apologize for that. The 7100, also a good value. It's about $700. And so $700, right? The 891 is 640 so you pay $60 more and you get VHF, UHF, and a digital mode out of it. And you get a little bit bigger screen. Much better menu system, too. Note, the 991 uh, on this slide here is the only radio that has an internal antenna tuner. None of the other radios have internal antenna tuners. Okay. All right, so we're going down the list a little bit further. The ICOM IEC, IC718 is probably the cheapest ICOM radio that's available retail, $600. No tuner. Uh, it's portable as it's a little bit smaller than the 7300, but the 7300 is um, also kind of as portable. John Drees says, shots fired here. 7,300 better than the 891, but not the 991. I beg to differ, good sir, but you are entitled to your own opinion. And then lastly, the Alinko DXSR8T. I put this here for completeness. This is a $500 radio, so it's very inexpensive. 
again as HF radios go for for an off the shelf radio. Remote head unit, pretty bare bones though. In general, statement about Alinco, they make radios that kind of aim towards the entry level market, and they're generally a decent value option, but they don't offer a lot of of frills, high end features. All right, so going back a second, note on antenna tuners. A lot of base station radios for HF will have an internal antenna tuner. The problem, particularly for the 100 watt models, they're a three to one antenna tuner, meaning the mismatch can be a three to one mismatch to the antenna from your radio, and it can match that. It can match that kind of mismatch. That is generally not a good enough matching network to handle something like a random wire antenna or running a 9 to 1 un un, if you've heard those terms before. You need to generally have an external tuner to be able to handle those, particularly if you want to crank 100 watts through it. So, you know, case in point, this is an example. One of my first home antennas was a uh, G5RV. A lot of people pick one up clubs hand out g5rvs a lot i made it to my 7300 with its three to one atu and the 7300 could just could not match the g5rv it matched some of the bands which is pretty nice but a lot of bands it just couldn't i had to ultimately get an external antenna tuner to do the matching that i needed to work on those bands and that was just kind of a lessons learned uh, that you know yes it has an internal antenna tuner but three to one is is really more or less to get an antenna that's a little bit out of resonance for the frequency you're on kind of into the space you need it to be it's not about using a non-resonant antenna like a nine to one unknown so just keep that in mind if that's what you're thinking about doing justin jost says josh thank you for all your videos i always look forward to your videos before buying any new ham radio gear well thank you we're going to talk about a real new radio here at the end uh, thanks again for your contribution to the ham community. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. These videos are a lot of fun to make. I always enjoy it. I always enjoy everybody coming out. There's like 675 people watching right now. Wow. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. If you could, click that thumbs up and subscribe. It's free. If you don't like it, you can just click it when you're you know, unsubscribed. But you shouldn't. You should go subscribe right now. Appreciate it. Mm. Uh, Christiana, if I didn't mention it. Yes, of course. And... and Thank you for pointing it out. The 7300 does have an internal tuner. Pretty much the same tuner as you get in the um, Yaesu 991. When I say similar, it's not the same tuner, but it, it, it works the same. Three to one. Three to one match. Oh, Digital Analog Ham, another YouTuber right? Uh, I believe he's been on the YouTubers bunch. He's a part of the content creators group. Please tell people about the difference between the 991 and the 991A. Is that what he meant to say? A better waterfall and better receive quality. Don't know if that's what he meant. I think he, he said the 991 twice, but hmm. Alright. Anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll check that. We'll keep going. So here's an alternative to an alternative. Base station. Hey, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> I appreciate everybody clicking that subscribe button. Uh, the Shegu G90. I know we've been talking about 100-watt radios. We're about to dip into QRP. Hang on to your butts here. But this is a 20-watt output radio. Likely you're putting out a little bit less if it's digital. It's a, it's a good price point, too, $450, but it's, it's 20 watts output. It's great for portable. It's real small, smaller than all the other radios we've been talking about, but not 100 watts. We're danger, danger, Will Robinson. We're dipping into QRP, which we'll talk about here shortly. But the tuner is generally thought to be 10 to 1 um, for matching. So you could use a random wire. You could use an un, -un. This will handle it no problem. It'll tune many, many things. Really bad uh, antennas. This will tune. It tuned this same that radio right there. Uh, tuned that uh, string of paper clips when I did the paper clip antenna. Go watch that if you haven't. This uh, radio has a fantastic tuner in it. People believe it's better than 10 to 1, and I wouldn't be surprised, but I didn't want to go making claims and then people come back to me. Hey, I tried to tune up 
the St. Louis Arch for an inside joke. And uh, it blew up my radio. Yeah, I don't want you coming at me with that one. <laughs> All right, so talk to your friends about QRP. Let's talk about QRP. QRP is less than 10 watts. QRP is great. It's a lot of fun. In our radio world, QRP, and again, this is a, a Q code. We call these Q codes. It generally implies 5 to 10 watts, but a lot of people have also this concept that it means portable. It's a portable radio. QRP radios are portable. There are a great deal of high-value QRP radios on the market and are worthy of consideration. But I do not recommend QRP for your first HF. HR radio. See, I'm a typo machine. I crank them out. I'm horrible at typing. <laughs> Thank you for popping up. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't cover the HF. Darn. HR radios. It's human resources. Report this slide to human resources. The simple reason why I don't recommend uh, QRP radios over 100 watt radios is frustration. You're going to get far, far, far more frustrated with a QRP radio than a 100 watt radio. I've already mentioned this, but I really need to drive it home. You really need to think about a 100 watt base station when you're starting out. QRP is great. It's fun, but you must appreciate it, what it means and have appropriate expectations. Okay. I think you get it. I can move on. But here are some QRP recommendations. And not a bad little base station type of thing, too. The Micro Bit X, right? Micro Bit X, I did a video building this. I did a live stream building this. I actually gave one away last year. It is a 10-watt output radio on 10 watts and dips down when you get down to 80, but it goes uh, 80 through 10. It's $100 to $200. It's a kit, though. you got to build a lot of it. And that's actually the picture below. Where that ended up <laughs> was not $200 because I threw on that screen, that really cool-looking screen. I threw in that little cool case, um, and then I ended up giving that away. But it, it's a hobbyist radio. Not bad, though, for $100, $200. If you're the type of person, you know, I, I make these videos for lots of people. If you're the type of hobbyist person that really gets into you know, tinkering around with a soldering iron, having fun, having something not work, going to sleep frustrated, waking up. If you get some kind of weird, I don't know, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> I have to think about it. But it's where you, you like to hurt yourself. <laughs> it's basically what tinkering around with radios can be sometimes. Um, then then maybe you'd be into it. It, it, it can be um, a finicky radio. But... Under two hundred dollars. If you like tinkering with stuff, it's a fun. It's a fun kit. Fun radio build uh, for those into the hobbyist aspects of making. Lots of fun upgrades. There's all kinds of plans online for little tweaks people do with their BitX. Uh, will work on digital modes, but you're you're going to have to do some stuff to it to make it do it. And this radio you put together. So keep that in mind. The Shegu X5105, $500, harder to find now, uh, getting harder to find because the G90 has kind of completely eclipsed them. G90 is also cheaper, but I already talked about the G90, so I just wanted to round it out a little bit. The X5105 is that top picture. That is mine. I was working in a park uh, with some Korean pastries and a cafe latte, as pictured there, uh, using an Elecraft antenna. And the Yesu, got to mention it because it's it's kind of the workhorse. Masochist. Bill Redman. I looked up and saw it. Masochist. You got it, man. The Yesu 817 and 818. I got to mention it because it's it, it's a it's a it's a it's a workhorse. It's a workhorse QRP radio. It's been out for over 10 years now. It's not necessarily my first recommendation, but if you find one used, by the way, all the radios I've mentioned today, if you find them used, think about buying them. They're if you can get a good deal, go nuts. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's an absolute workhorse of a QRP radio. The advantage of the 817 and the 818 is that it is also all HF and VHF, UHF, and all mode. So it's a radio that a lot of people use for satellite work. We'll talk about that next week. I guarantee you the 817, 818 will be mentioned in the live stream next week. It's a shack in the box. It does all the things. But it's QRP, okay? So if you find one used, you, you might be into that. All right, so used HF radios. Let's walk through some radios that are only used. You're only going to find them used and uh, <laughs> and and still, but you should keep an eye out for. All right, I made this 
right before going live. There are many used HF radios out there. Go to an HF radio rescue shelter and find a radio to love. This is Josh Das reminding you to help control the radio population. Have your radio spayed and or neutered. So please make sure we're uh, doing the right thing by our radios. Make sure you give your radios a good home. Dana Young, thank you for the super chat. HRCC-inspired mobile GMRS install on ATVs. Cool. Recent Idaho trip. Uh, MX rider injured another out of fuel. Com saved the day. Nothing working on tech license. Wow. Hey, man, if, if it works, it works. I don't care if you've got a, a ham radio license or a GMRS license. If you save the day with the radio, no problem. So HF radios go way back, and there are still a lot of high-value radios in the used market that will provide hours of enjoyment for you. Older radios will likely be better suited for Morse code, CW, um, AM, and single sideband operations. You can find used radios on eBay, QRZ.com, HaRadio.com, that should be HamRadio.com, MTCRadio.com, and Ham and Hi-Fi, and we'll, we'll walk through those pages in a little bit. A couple of standout radios to take a look for, keep an eye out for, are going to be the ICOM 7200, the ICOM 7000, the ICOM IC706 Mark IIG, specifically the Mark IIG, the Yaesu 450, which just fell out of the market. It's just been discontinued. That's the lower left-hand corner. And the FTDX 1200, which are all coming down in price and are all still excellent radios to get started with. And none of these radios are that old. They're not SDRs. They're still discrete components, traditional um, you know, surface mount components, but they're all really good radios. And they're worth you taking a look at, particularly if you can find them at a good deal. All right, so let's talk about the 705. <laughs> Waited all the way at the end. We're going to talk about the 705. The 705 is an awesome radio. I will uh, flip it over here to my overhead really quickly to see my little shrine that I built for my 705 today. I got done taking pictures, and I was like, let's just let's just dump them all in there. Uh-oh, the, the tip jar's filling up from all the super chats. That's not in the other, slide, uh, the other scene, so they're blowing up right now. Ah, so uh, John Drees said, what, no Kenwood? Again, going back to my rules, starting this whole thing out. I don't have a lot of experience with the Kenwoods as far as in the HF space. They're generally more expensive. If you can find Kenwoods at a decent deal in the used market, they're probably absolutely good to go. I, I have no problem with Kenwoods. I just don't have big experience with Kenwoods, except for the 520, uh, the Kenwood TS520. That is a good radio. I did review that. No, no, I reviewed the four. What was the mobile one? Is that the 450? That's really the only experience I have with Kenwood. Which one was the one that was uh, the mobile that either had a tuner or 200 watts? Somebody will tell me in the chat. All right, so <laughs> the 705 is awesome. However, everything I said about QRP is still true with the 705. It is 10 watts output when fueled uh, by exterior 12 volts. Otherwise, it is 5 watts output. However, much like the 817 and the 818, it is HF plus 2 meter and 70 centimeter. So that's very good. It's all mode. It's D-Star capable. The radio has a ton of functionality that most other radios simply do not have in the market. Um, not at least all together at one. Maybe the, the 9700 has all those features. So it, it's a tough call. It's, it's expensive. It's $1,200. Would that be for a beginner? Probably not. But I get so many questions asking me, is this a good beginner radio? Is this a, a good mobile radio? And by mobile, I mean something that you'd like put in your car and leave it in your car. No, you need to bring this in every day. But it's got a tripod mount, so I guess you could screw the tripod mount in and have you know fun with it. It's a fantastic radio. It's a portable radio. I mean, their whole campa uh, campaign is be active. Get outdoors with the radio. Take it hiking. Have fun with it. Go to a park. You know, Take it along with you. That's what it was designed for. It's not necessarily a beginner's radio, though. It can be if you appreciate that it is a QRP radio. All right, I missed a super chat. Sean Wyland says, is the Yesu FT-891... Uh, 
and the FT50 antenna tuner worth buying at this point for soda and poda. I have a Lab 559 Discovery. Oh, you got a Lab 59. Very good. And an ICOM. Wait, wait, wait. Or have. So, oh, man, Sean. Whew. Sean. Um, okay, let me let me break that down really quickly. The, uh, man, see, no. So, no. The answer is no. Sean, you make a really good question. You have a really good question. The FT891 is 100 watts output. The TX500, the Lab 599 Discovery TX500, and the 705, both are 5 watt or 10 watt QRP radios. So it doesn't eclipse them other than those QRP radios are more portable than the 891, but not by much. If you were... Okay, so if you stumbled onto a, a person and they had their radios, you had all three radios set up and they were all on, let's say, the same antenna. Ounce for ounce, pound for pound, the 891 is going to probably will make more contacts because it's a 100 watt output capable radio. The awesome features in the 705 aren't going to make it necessarily make more contacts. It's just going to make it easier to use, if that makes sense. A lot of the features that are baked into the 705 are for how you, the human, interfaces with the radio, which I love, all of them. But the 891 is 100 watts at the end of the day. So if you're purely concerned about making contacts, the 891 is a fantastic radio. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, I think it's the TS480. Sorry, I'm jumping around. I know I get comments all the time. You jump around too much. It's because I got a lot of things going on in my head, all right? Uh, the Kenwood TS480, or is it the 440? That was the mobile. I think that's it. We're blown past the hour here. But anyway. Um... Somebody said I don't see any Elecraft in here. Where was that? I didn't see any Elecraft, which is an excellent radio. John, John Shearrill, you are 100% right. But I'm talking about introductory radios, generally aimed at being a little bit cheaper and trying to answer questions I'm getting from a lot of newbies. Newbies are not asking me about the Elecraft. And the Elecraft that are at the lower price point, those are QRP radios. You're not picking up, aside from used, you can get a used K3. In fact, we're going to talk about a used K3 here shortly unless it's sold in the hours or so um, that I have put these slides together. Let's look at some radio mobile, I'm sorry, some radio used sites. First, I want to show Universal Radio has this really cool page. And I just want you to see it so you, you, you're kind of familiar with it. I think I might have put the link in the description. But if you if you search Universal Radio used radios, you can go to discontinued VHF, UHF, multi-mode transceivers, and you can get a whole big list. So, for instance, let's go to, they've got down here, it says discontinued HF transceivers. Let's pull up those Kenwoods. See, we can answer our question right now. 480, I think, is what people said. And I think that's right. No? Did I screw that up, or is it 880? I thought that got um, canceled. I thought that got discontinued. Anyway, let's let's pull up a, a Kenwood. So there you go. There's an old Kenwood. So this is a really good list that you can look at. So if you slide down to ICOM here and you pull up the 7200, there's that 7200, and those are all the accessories that came along with it. And I think it looks like they still have some of the accessories, like the folded dipole. I think we talked about this antenna. We talked about this antenna on the ALE episode. Uh, the 7200 with that antenna on ALE is a, is a good match. <laughs> so this is a good resource if you're looking for used radios. And this is just to tell you what was in the market. Is it the 430? Am I that? Why can't I not remember that radio? No, it's the mobile one. Everybody keeps messing with me in the chat. Yeah, it's not in the it's not in this list. Well, I guess this list is a little needs to be updated. Let's see if it's on the active, current, Kenwood. Oh, there it is. 
480. Okay, so this recently got discontinued, but they just haven't moved it over to the discontinued side. Uh, I reviewed this radio highly. This is a good radio, so I apologize. You should also look at this radio if you can find one used. This would be a good uh, good radio to check out. The cool thing about this radio is it comes in two options. The first option is 100 watts output with a tuner, and the second option is no tuner but 200 watts output. In a mobile, that's pretty awesome. <coughs> Mr. Roman uh, asks, newbie question, can you place an antenna in your vehicle that can be attached to a handheld Baofeng? Also, I got CB radios with Wilson antennas. Yes, you can put an antenna on your vehicle. You can put up a quarter wave, two meter, 70 centimeter antenna, and you can feed that with a BNC connector. And then all you would need is an adapter that goes from your SMA connector to BNC. So you get a quick attach, deattach. Otherwise, you have to twist on the SMA and twist the SMA off. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Go to BNC adapter. Excuse me. Okay, so that's that. All right, let me go back up to the top here. First, Hammond Hi-Fi. This is a eBay channel that you should put in your list, Hammond Hi-Fi. They both buy radios from, you know, Silent Keys, families of Silent Keys, Silent Keys who are liquidating, and then they sell on eBay. And they have a wealth. Here's a Heath Kit amp, uh, radio amp. They have a ton of really eclectic stuff, but also some new stuff. Like, for instance, this Drake 2B vintage receiver is very clean. But in the back, it says it needs some work. That is a really clean radio. I know we're not talking about boat anchors today, but I saw that. I have a, a, a 3B. And that is a very cool. That is a very clean radio. Oh, sorry, 2B. It, when I saw that, I saw the face on that thing. I was like, man, that is really clean. Anyway, those are cool radios. They don't always work, though, because they're getting a little old, and those capacitors uh, start to leak, and you got to go in there and replace them. Let's see if we can find a good value. Otherwise, we'll go to ham radio. See, they goes, it goes on 10 pages of listings. You can just hop on there and start looking like... Uh, do, 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 do. That's another amplifier. Okay, we'll jump ahead here. Anyway, Hammond Hi-Fi, make sure you go check them out. I just add it to my list and I, and I check in every once in a while. It's a lot of old stuff, so if you're into the hobby side, you, you're interested in boat anchors, you may find some good stuff. I feel like what's happened is that people know about Hammond Hi-Fi, and they get swooped pretty hard when they update stuff. And so that's probably why you don't see it. Hands are pretty... Uh, Hams are pretty active when it comes to used. We're, we're always into making a deal. So here's the Ham Radio Outlet. They have a used page as well. And you can just go down and see. This is where I was like, hey, you, it's really good to have that Universal Radio website so you can figure out what that radio is. Like this is an Icom. That's an amplifier, amplifier. This is an FTDX5000, and it is <laughs> $2,800. Probably not entry level. Here you go. So Elecraft K3S. That's a pretty recent uh, radio, relatively new, selling used for $1,700. Elecraft isn't cheap. They are fantastic radios, though. For a newcomer, I don't know that I would point you at Elecraft necessarily, but they are very, very good. $1,700, though. Keep that in mind. Next used site, uh, MTC Radio, they also have a used section, and you can see pictures. Congratulations, MTC, on having pictures. That's fantastic. So here you go. Here's What is that? Oh, there you go. Nikon 2300 for 150 There you go. Excellent condition. That's not bad. That's a, that's a relatively okay deal. Only two pages of deals, though, but they've got pictures, so that's good. All right. Next on the list. So qth.swap.qth.com. This website has some pretty good deals, but it's kind of hard to navigate. So let's dive in. Radios HF. Let's see if we can find something. 905 listings. Come on. So this is kind of, those pictures are not for the radios. So here's a 746, an ICOM 746. Um, I, you can't click on anything. They don't have their own page. You have to click on the camera. And that's the picture. 
Okay. That's not bad. 746 is a discontinued radio. Pretty good radio. So then you got to read it. This was uh, from a silent key estate sale. Comes with the original box, manual, and a desk mic. Not bad. Anderson power poles installed. To the best of my knowledge, it has no mods. Everything seems to be working. Comes from a smoke-free and pet-free shack. Local pickup or will ship for $50. And what is he asking? Ah, contact him for the price. So you get a lot of that stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, I'll ship it. You know, and it's available. Let me know what you want to pay for it. And then it kind of becomes a haggle thing. So that's the real trick. 62 single cab. What are good prices for the used radios you mentioned? It's tough to say because we are in a niche hobby and there aren't a lot of like, you know, generally you could hop on eBay and be like, hey, I'll just look at the the past um uh, past auctions on the same item and see what they ended up as and if i get a sample size of five i can take a you know median average of that and be like oh okay it's you know five hundred dollars it's a little bit harder with ham radio in fact it's a lot a bit harder because you got a sample from different sites on what things sold for and sometimes they don't leave the posts up so it becomes really difficult to figure out what things sell for the way i generally look at it is you can get a good idea of what it's sold for in retail. You can look that up. You can figure out what the retail price was. And then knowing that retail price, you can kind of look at the condition of the radio and just start deducting from that. I don't see a problem with starting at 20% off of retail, depending on how old the radio is. If it's you know a year old radio, you can't really do 20%. You maybe get 5%, maybe 10% um, if you're lucky. So jeeper creeper says smoke free and pet free is super important got a used radio once and had to get rid of it because i couldn't get the smell out of it yeah uh smoking and ham radio do not mix it, it it really stinks up the radio pretty bad hey here's a kx2 so going down the ellacraft road let's let's take a look at this ellacraft kx2 uh this person has a kx2 on a stand and he is asking $1,000. Let me go back here. Okay. For sale, serial number, owner's manual, nifty manual. So nifty manual is a, is a secondary manual that, that helps you with some of the features. A KX-AT2, KX-102MH3, KXPD2, BNCBP. So he's going through the whole list. Power KL, low pro K. So basically it's... um. So basically, it's the shack in the box, plus he has two extra knobs. Extra battery and charger, so those batteries are $80. Um, all in excellent condition. Also, I have a new Comet 8060 portable antenna, so he's throwing in an antenna. Was going to use it for moto camping, but have other priorities. $1,000 shipped. Okay, so shack in the box for this radio is over $1,200. He's throwing in an antenna. That's probably $60 to $100. I don't know, just looking at it. He has an extra battery that's an extra $80, so that's $1,500, and he's asking $1,000, and it looks to be working okay. Ah, but here's the trick, fellows. Do you see his call sign in this picture? I don't. I don't see his call sign. Actually, the, the battery's right there, and it looks like that little plastic's been ripped through. So here's my problem with this. So this is listing by N6DLH. I would, uh, Brad Ward's already nailing it. He's saying that's probably a good deal, but I would ask him for a picture. K8, so this thing sold, by the way, just everybody's messaging in this guy right now. This just happened live. There are 685 people watching. This guy's getting smashed. Um, ask him to send you a picture of the radio with his call sign next to the picture. Write your call sign on it and the date and the time. Date and time's important. Know your, your time stamps, my dudes and my ladies. Um, do not buy this without, without getting the call sign in the picture or something to know that he has it. So please, 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 don't get ripped off. All right, so that is... Uh, what's the next one? So we did QTH. Okay, RNL. They also have a used section, right? So again, this one though, look, you, you don't get a lot of information. It's just kind of like, I hope you know what all these numbers mean. I hope you understand what you're looking for, right? This one just says bad, bad. It's just, it's it's two kinds of bad. It's all bad. 
Sean Wyland, any kit radios or out of the box radios capable of frequency hopping spread spectrum to work on the amateur bands? Ooh, Sean, good question. I believe sped, spread spectrum is only legal in the higher frequency spaces. I could be wrong. I have not dipped into that world. That is a whole world. Um, spread spectrum is generally not okay on any of the lower, uh, the lower frequencies. Keep that in mind. Let's look through this one again, see if we can find something real quick. Uh, see, no, pic no, no pictures, I think. Yeah, no pictures. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Good, we got pictures, good. We are looking at a very expensive radio. Uh, the Yaesu FTDX5000 MP is a, when it came out, very expensive radio. It's still expensive. It's it's older, but it's a very high-quality radio. Look how many buttons this thing has. You can't see it on the picture, but just on this one quarter panel, look how many buttons are on that thing. Every one of those buttons controls something discrete, and they likely have a single click and then a long press click. Uh, this was one of the ones when I went to go look at the uh, FT, the new one, the new Yesu. This was right next to it, and we were we were jumping between it, having a lot of fun playing around with that. That's R and L. All right, QRZ. I got to mention it. Where you likely have a page on here, whether you know you do or not, if you got your ham license. QRZ.com. They have a swap meet page, and there's a hot sheet. And if you click on that hot sheet, oh look, there's a 7100. Hey, we may sell this thing. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> that also happens a lot. Hey, look at that. It's gone. SDR Play, RSPDX. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's see if there's another radio we want to look at. Motorola. Motorola guys in the house. Okay, let's look at this 400, 450DX. Okay, so they generally do a pretty good job um, at the uh, at the QRZ, giving you the ability to add pictures, which is always nice. And hey, look at this guy. This guy has a picture or person. He's got his 450 on top of a tuner with the call sign there, which is nice. I guess that looks legit. Looks a little funky from the, one of the pixels here and there. I don't know about that one. That's a little, that's a little sus. Hold on, let me go back to this for a second. Uh, but what he says, selling a very, very, uh, very, very clean non-smoker HF six meter system. I need to get an HF amp, and the XYL told me I have way too much ham gear. Don't listen, Leia. Don't listen to this. Anyway, here is some pics of the system. I have original box and I am the original owner. Asking 850 for all three. What? What do you mean? Oh, oh, oh I see. I'm, oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, he's got an LDG YT1200, a signal link USB. So I think this is all of it right here. This is it. Yeah, okay. So this is the kit. Uh, the the YT twelve hundred auto tuner auto tuner right I don't know what those go for I'm guessing three hundred four hundred dollars the signal link I believe is uh, one fifty and that FT four fifty D when sold originally was seven hundred and fifty dollars with the tuner this has an external tuner and he's asking seven hundred dollars not a bad deal if it's not sus <laughs> I don't know yeah I'm getting sus in the chat we're, we're getting some sus. I, I, I'm right. Am I, am I wrong? Is this sus? That's sus, right? A little bit. That, that picture looks a little. I mean, it's, it's there. It's the printing that I don't like. It's the, it's the text and the whole thing. I don't know. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I'm gonna just get off there. I'm gonna leave that guy alone. Uh, and that's it. That was the last one I wanted to talk about. Okay, so we're at 6.30. Wow. Okay, let's take a couple of questions. Um, I would like to encourage you all. We were going to do a Zoom. We'll do Zoom next week when we do the, um, when we do the live stream with uh, when we talk about satellite portable operations. I'll look in the chat here for a little bit, but please, please take the link in the description to our Discord. Join the Discord. It's really not that complicated. You can join on your phone, your iPad, your Android, uh, your laptop, whatever you want. Anything is our Discord. It's a great community of people 
text chat, voice chat, you name it. We have ham radio groups for almost anything you're doing in ham radio. And if we're not doing the thing you're doing in ham radio, we could probably make a group for it. And there's probably people that want to talk about it anyway. Please, please join us there. Please join us there. And uh, we'll be doing an after chat over there. So I'm looking in the chat right now. A lot of people were saying fake. I Yeah, I'm kind of with you. That was weird. That was a little sus. There's a lot of sus that happens on QRZ, by the way. So uh, for the sales. I won't talk about any other sus stuff, specifically the, the sales. The tape looked fake. Um, the call sign writing looked fake. Not good. Uh, you only likely have a page if you got your license in the states. Oh yeah, yeah, John, John Nemeth. But most people that get their ham radio license, that's the majority of. Oh, <laughs> Ethan. You know, we gotta pull that up. Jeez, God, I'm an, I'm an idiot. My own, my own Facebook group. We have a buy sell trade page. Of course we do. I'm still looking for questions, by the way, but. Duh. Come on, buddy. There we go. There we go. So ham radio crash course buy sell trade. We also have a buy sell trade on our Discord, and uh, we police it by we. Uh, the moderators keep an eye out, but you are on your own. Don't be sussing it up for everybody. Uh, I will throw out there. Somebody's got a technician book. They must have passed their technician. Hey, there's a D74. How much is this? Oh. How much is he asking? Tell me the price, man. $700. Oh, because he's got like a ton of stuff with it. Okay. Hey, Ray Novak. Is, oh, no. He, I'll invite him to the group. Uh, okay. Okay. So what are you asking? Again, why am I having so hard of a time finding what the price is? Oh, asking 625. I'm always looking for like the dollar sign and a number. 625 with a tuner and an... Hey, that's Chris. That's one of our admins. Of course it is. That's a really good deal. Go uh, go help Chris out. Yeah, Chris is sus. His, he's got his Glarg. He's got his Glarg uh, ID right there. I'm calling sus. Somebody, t somebody tell an admin. That's sus. Um, I still have my hex beam. If somebody wants to come pick it up locally, I'll give you a sweet deal on it. Uh, a leather holster for their, just a plain holster for their HT. Ooh. I actually want to take a look at these. The radiodity or the radiodidity, and the radiodity as the cool people call it, GS5B, 2 meter, 70 centimeter. So, yeah, please join us. <laughs> I need to add that to the links, by the way. Thank you, Ethan, for reminding me. Please take the links to the buy sell trade page. All right, let me go back here. Doop -ba -doop. Ron Thompson, can I set up a shack in my unheated garage? It depends on where you live, man. If it gets, like, super cold, maybe not. And nobody pick on Chris, because he will, he will make you pay. <laughs> California, like, particularly as you get closer to the beach, like, very little... Um, insulation good radio for ham and cb they don't exist they don't exist in one well they don't exist legally you can't go buy off the shelf and get a ham radio that also does cb you can get one that was illegally modified or sorry ham modified to be operated by a ham radio operator but not to transmit on cb don't tr don't transmit on cb with your modified ham radio um they don't exist off the shelf though Have you connected a tablet to a radio? Yes, Don Hutchcraft. Any one of my videos that involve Raspberry Pis, they are built to run headless, meaning um, 
meaning that you plug it in, connect it to the computer, and then you connect to it via a tablet over Wi-Fi in the portable space, in the outdoors. Somebody asked, why am I getting rid of my hex beam? Because I replaced it with a step IR. Hopefully you've seen the last two videos I put up on the topic. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying there aren't ham radios that do C B frequencies that can't transmit in there. I'm saying it's there's nothing off the shelf that does that. And if it does, who boy. <laughs> Okay, so we're, we're at 6.30. We're an hour and a half. We've been running long pretty much since COVID started. Pretty much since the COVID hit, I've been running live streams really long, you know, just to give you guys something to do. But, hey, the party doesn't have to end here. You just got to hop over to the Discord and join us on the after stream. So, yes. Want to hop over right here and say a big thank you to my patrons, the names you see are my producers. But we've also got, you know, the channel supporters and the brew crew. The brew crew is a little bit different today. Not drinking the beer, drinking the celebratory champagne. Thank you very much, Leia. I hope you do go watch Phantom Signals. The link is in the description. That is going to be a four-episode series, and I believe I am in all four. And there is some fun videos coming up. I, um, I think... This is me talking. A little insider baseball. I liked the last episode, but every next one um, is going to be more interesting from a radio standpoint, from my point of view. So thank you to the producers. Um, appreciate you. Next week, we're all screwed up. Normally, the Patron Picks episode comes out the first Saturday of the month. This week, though, hey, Good Game Ham Radio. There he is. He gets two lines because his name is so big. Next week is the Patron Picks episode because I wanted to do it right. I can talk about um, ham radio satellites, but I don't have enough contacts. I don't feel I have enough experience under my belt. I've made contacts with ham radio satellites. So I'm bringing in somebody that knows exactly what they're talking about and is a good, great source of information in the amateur radio space for ham radio satellites. So that should be a lot of fun. I have a lot of questions to ask. And uh, yeah. Somebody, Jeeper Creeper is asking, what channel is Phantom Signals on? It's on the Science Channel. The link is in the description. Mike N8YO says, ah, wow, I'm looking forward to that. The first episode was really good. Well, thank you. There's going to be more of that. More of me out uh, on that summity area where we were at. You probably already got kind of a clue of what it's about if you saw the CB radio and some other antennas and some other things. And if you went to their website, you definitely saw me doing something with a with a particular rig that you could be like, I have an idea what he's doing with that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Someone said, uh, someone said about having a Cobra radio. That is a good mobile radio for CB. Carlos, <laughs> you should keep an eye on the Phantom Signals. Uh, that's all I'll say on that. Okay. I am heading out. Everybody who's asking questions, how much is that step IR? You can go on the step IR website and look it up. Uh, Bob K6 UDA, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, I haven't seen Bob in a while in any after chats. Is he in? Did I miss him? Maybe he'll join me over there. All right, anyway, 600 something people still. I hope you think about joining us over on the Discord. I will live stream that to Twitch. My Twitch channel is Ham Radio Crash Course. So if you want to look me up there, I'll be live again. But we're wrapping it up on the YouTube side. Thank you so much for watching.